Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten requests from a number of people to do a review on cobalt switch machines. So finally, I'm going to get around to doing that for you. So stick around and we'll take a look at how these work, how you can program them, and how you can use these on your model railroad. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Now, before I get started here taking a look at the cobalt switch machines, I want to point out that this is not a paid uh, advertisement or video for uh, cobalt switch machines. So let's go ahead and move on and take a look at how these uh, work and how to program them. So they are a slow motion stall motor type switch machines, similar in many ways to a tortoise and the Smail versions that are available from Circuitron and are very popular in the US. Now these have been available for a number of years and they're starting to uh, pop up a lot more often now here in the United States. So let's take a, a closer look at what the cobalt switch machine really is. Now there actually are three types of cobalt switch machines and they basically all look alike. For example, there is the cobalt Omega and it has a dual voltage uh, power capability. It operates off of DC power at anywhere from 6 to 12 volts and 12 to 18 volts DC. Like the tortoise switch machine, it has two uh, single pole double throw switches built into it. The second version of the cobalt switch machine is the IP analog. And the analog means that it's basically designed for use with non-DCC powered layouts. It is a DC powered switch machine and you can operate it at anywhere from 9 to 21 volts DC. So it is a little bit different from the uh, Omega in that respect. Uh, however, it also has uh, dual uh, single pole double throw switches built in like the Tortoise. Finally, there is the IP Digital. It's designed for use with DCC. So you can power this with either DC or DCC power and that can be at anywhere from 9 to 21 volts DC or DCC. It has a dedicated output port for the frog on your turnouts. So that means that as the turnout is being thrown, as the points are being thrown, it will automatically change the polarity of the frog for you. And there's a dedicated terminal just for that purpose built in here. Uh, it has one single pole double throw switch for controlling other devices and it has an additional set of contacts built in that can be used with push button switches, either single or dual, and with momentary toggle switches. Now remember that's momentary. They just have to be a momentary contact. And that way you don't have to buy an accessory decoder like I did for my uh, turnouts here on the layout uh, to be able to use push buttons. And the reason for that, of course, is it has an accessory decoder built into it. And we're going to take a look at how to program that and how to use that to your advantage. Because one of the things that you can do with these is set them up uh, to use detectors. And that can be uh, detectors like the NCE BD20 or the DCC Concepts LMID uh, detector that they produce for use with these. Plus, there's some other types of detectors, such as magnetic sensors, that can be used with these as well. So we'll be taking a look at that in a future video, because one of the things I want to do is set these up to automate the entry and exit point uh, from a reverse loop. So I'll be able to run trains uh, uh, into the staging yard and have them automatically just go through a reverse loop without me or the other operators having to take care of that and push the switches for it. Now the IP digital version is designed to operate with DCC power and it can still be powered with DC power and it will operate at somewhere between 9 and 21 volts DCC or DC. So you have that option of using either of those. But if you still want to be able to control it using your handheld DCC throttles or 
computer programs like JMRI, then you do have to use the DCC power input. But I'll be going over how to uh, set up your own DCC accessory power bus uh, for use with situations like this, as well as other, other reasons to use those on the layout. So that'll be a future video that we'll be taking a look at installing an accessory DCC power bus. So what I want to do now is zoom in closer and give you a look at these uh, close up and the contacts and all of that before we move on to how to how to actually power these up and program them. I've gone ahead and laid out the Cobalt uh, IP digital version of the uh, of their switch machine uh, next to a tortoise and a snail. So one thing you'll notice right off is that uh, it is shorter than the uh, than these others. Uh, it is nowhere near as wide either. So it's going to fit in uh, some places that these might not, and it's going to be easier to hide it underneath of the layout. You'll notice here that it uses a design that is almost identical uh, to the tortoise and the snail. So it has this movable fulcrum here uh, that you can use to change the amount of pressure that the uh, throw spring here uh, puts on your points. So it makes it easy to adjust that. Another thing that I wanted to point out is that it comes with the throw rod here centered and locked in place. And they do that because it makes it easier to install this device when you're uh, feeding it up through the layout and up through the uh, throw rod or throw bar on your turnout itself. And later on you can uh, program this so that it uh, deactivates the centering here, and you can then use it to throw the points whichever direction you want. And we'll get into that in a minute here. On this side, you can see it has a circuit board that is built in, and it has these um, contacts. Now these are a uh, spring-loaded contact, so you simply push down on this spring-loaded device here, and insert your wire into one of these holes that associated with these springs. So that holds it in, and there's no soldering at all, and no screws to have to, uh, to fiddle with. So it's fairly easy to set these up. Uh, right here on this side, there is a uh, diagram showing what each one of these uh, set of holes or terminals is for. So you've got your DC in, you've got your frog out, you've got your uh, switch contacts, and then you have your uh, push button or toggle switch contacts here. So everything is laid out for you. Finally, right here, there is a small slider switch that you can use to put it into programming mode. So if you flip it this way towards where it says set, then that is in the programming mode. When you're done, you flip it back over here to the run mode. And we'll get more into that in a minute. So that makes it easy to set this up and work with. So in preparation for providing a power connection, I've stripped off 10 millimeters of insulation from the wire and gave it a few good twists so it's a good and tight uh, bundle of wires there. And I'm going to insert that into one of these DCC spring clips. Push down on that and then release it. And it's good and tight. It's a bit easier to do this if you don't have that spring uh, wire in the way, to get in the way here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and do this, this way. Push down on it, and that's all there is to it. So we've got the power wire set up now. And I'm just going to use a couple of clip leads to attach it to the uh, track over here when we get to get around to programming it. Let's go ahead and add a simple momentary push button switch in here so that we can uh, control the uh, switch machine once we get it installed. So for that, once again, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to use my tortoise to some advantage here. So we're going to want to put it in here like this. And then we're going to put the second one here like that. And that's all there is to it. So now, I have the uh, device set up with power leads coming into it, and I've got my uh, push button switch ready to use once we get it powered up.
Let's talk a little bit about installation because they provide something I haven't seen before. These are small adhesive pads and you can see they're designed to fit here on the top of the uh, switch machine case itself. Oops, sorry, they go on like this. And then you can peel the adhesive off, stick it to it. When you install it under the layout, that adhesive is going to hold it permanently in place. Now they do provide five screws in the installation packet with it. And uh, they uh, suggest that in order to make the installation a lot quieter, that you use the adhesive, install that, put the screws in place and leave them there for a day or so, so that the adhesive has a good chance to bond with the underside of your layout and the uh, case of the cobalt. And then after that, you can remove these set of screws and it will be a lot quieter because you won't have those screws conducting uh, noise from the motor directly into the underside of your layout, which creates a sounding board effect and it's very, very much louder. So that way you can quiet things down. Now I wanted to open one of these up and give you an, a look at what's inside. So I've uh, gone ahead and taken the screws out. So now I'm going to try to get it apart. Okay, so here's what they look like on the inside. You can see this uh, set of gears all through here that uh, provide the reduction and all of the high torque that these things produce. So they're all through here. Here's the motor that runs it. This here is the accessory decoder that is built in. And uh, over here on the back side, you can see it has the same little set of uh, wipers similar to those that you see in a tortoise switch machine. Um, I'm going to try to pop this all back together while I can remember. But one thing that uh, is evident here, look here at all of this hard rubber that is placed around the mechanism. And it's on both sides here. You can see it's got this black rubber compound that is in here. Um, and uh, that is part of their sound deadening design. So they've done a lot to try to reduce the amount of noise uh, that these create. Now, I don't recommend you doing this yourself. I don't know if it violates the warranty, but it's probably not a good thing to do anyway, because once these gears get all out of alignment, uh, it might not run as smooth as it once did. I managed to get this one back together again, so uh, hopefully I didn't destroy the mechanism by taking it apart, but I thought it was worth doing that to give you a look at the sound deadening that they have added to these uh, to make them a little bit quieter. One thing that, that uh, they, they do recommend specifically is on uh, Pico uh, turnouts that have the, the built-in spring that holds the points in place. And I'll point out that the uh, microengineering turnouts uh, have the same type of mechanism. They recommend that you do remove that small spring from your uh, Pico turnouts. And I would presume from microengineering turnouts, which have a similar type of mechanism because they say that every time that they have tested Pico turnouts, that they fail um, if that spring is left in place. And also, I think they said after about 400,000 cycles, they have found that the uh, uh, point mechanism itself will fail uh, because of the uh, effects of that spring itself. So I know that you're probably uh, sitting there wondering, where are these available since they're made in the UK? Well, I can tell you, I know that Iron Planet Hobbies sells these. Uh, BobTheTrainGuy.com uh, 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 carries these as well as some other cobalt products, as does Iron Planet Hobbies. Uh, I have seen these on the uh, Model Railroad Supply uh, website, and that's Mountain Division uh, Hobbies, I believe, uh, is the name of that one. I've seen him uh, selling these on, uh, on uh, uh, eBay. So you can very often find these for sale on eBay. Uh, I managed to pick up uh, eight more of them uh, just yesterday uh, at an unbelievable price. And I'll tell you about that in a minute because I know that you're sitting there wondering, okay, how do they compare to the tortoise and the smear? And I'm only gonna talk about the cobalt digital. I'm not gonna talk about the analog or the omega, just the digital version. Now. I took a look on eBay, and that's how I did a cost comparison. 
Um, uh, these are not the full retail prices that I'm giving you. It's what you would have to pay on eBay. And most of these, that includes free shipping. So a tortoise on eBay runs anywhere from $15 up to over $20. And that includes shipping and handling. Now the lower price is usually because uh, they are purchased or sold in a 12 pack. And I found individually for $20 uh, uh, in other ads on eBay. The snail, uh, it can sell from anywhere from around $30 up in a 12 pack up to $40 individually. And again, those include free shipping. So you're paying a sizable premium to get the built-in accessory decoder. But, and that's also this version that has the screw terminals built in as well. Because these are available with screw terminals or without them, just like on the tortoise here. So those can run anywhere from $30 up to $40, roughly, for the snail. What about the IP Digital? I found those for $26.99 or $27 each in a 12-pack and $29.59 or say $30 individually. And that's including free shipping. So they're somewhere in between a tortoise and a snail. And remember, that has these contact terminals here, the spring-loaded terminals built in, as well as a built-in accessory decoder like the snail has. Let's assume like you're doing like I did here on the Piedmont Southern, and you're going to be installing uh, tortoise switch machines that you want to control with a switch eight and a button board plus push buttons. Well, I did a cost comparison of that as to the uh, digital. So for a tortoise, you're going to pay, pay something around $15.83 each. Uh, for an AccuLite snap-on um, terminal block like the ones here on the snail, you're going to pay about $7.20, something in that uh, realm. Also, for a Switch 8 accessory decoder and its uh, button board, that works out to about $13 per turnout. So the total cost for a tortoise switch machine, the clip-on screw terminals, and the switch 8 button board combination comes out at $36. The IPP Digital you can have for $27. So from a cost comparison, these can be used less expensively if you do your shopping right. I did some shopping the other night, as I said, on eBay, and I found a fellow who had bought a 12-pack of the Cobalt Digitals, and he only needed four to finish his layout. So he was selling the other eight in an eBay auction. I got them for $20 each, and that includes shipping. So I saved a lot of money on those. So of course, your decision as to which way you want to go will depend on how you're going to control your tortoises. If you're going to use them with an accessory decoder and that kind of thing, then you might be wanting to take a look at the Cobalt Digitals. They uh, can work out to be less expensive, depending on the options that you decide to go with. Okay, so what I want to show you now is how to deactivate that self-centering mode, because if you remember I said that this uh, position here in the center is the default when it is shipped. And that's so it makes it easier to slide this up uh, through the uh, points or through the, the hole in the throw rod in your points when you're installing it for the first time. And then after that you can deactivate the self-centering and change the address to whatever you want. Now how do you go about doing that? Well, um, first of all, all you have to do is change the address to a value of 198, and that deactivates the self-centering. If you want to reactivate self-centering to install it again somewhere else, you can simply change the address to 199. And finally, it has one other feature in that uh, you can enter a value of 197, and that will change the normal direction of travel. So that if you have it set up uh, on JMRI, or, or if you don't, you know, for various reasons, you need it to throw a different way uh, when it's first thrown, uh, then you can do that by simply changing the address to a value of 197. It will reverse 
the normal direction of travel, just like on a locomotive. So now let's go ahead, I want to show you how to go about changing or deactivating that self-centering mode. So I'm going to power it up, and it's going to go first to one side, then it's going to go to the other side, and then it's going to return to the center. Now, so that's how it sets itself in the center. Now what I want to do in order to change that, I have to go here to the back side and set this little switch to the programming mode where it says set. So I'm going to do that and set it back down again. Make sure it's firmly in there. And then with my Digitrax throttle, I'm going to use the switch commands because that's how you change the address. So I'm going to hit the switch command. I'm going to give it a value of 198. And then I'm going to hit throne and clear and throne and clear. And that's just duplicating the command to make sure it takes. And then I'm going to set it back to run mode like that and power it back up again. So we'll power it down and power it up. And it was, it's wait, it was waiting for a command, so I just hit the push button. So I've got the push button installed, if you remember. So all I have to do is hit that push button to activate it. Okay. Now, let's change, to, uh, change it to a different address. Let's say we want to use address 200. Now, I'm going to go into switch mode, and I'm going to enter 200. And we're going to hit throne, clear, throne, clear. And then I'm going to exit. Okay. Depower, uh, power it down. Set it back to run mode. And then we'll power it back up again. So it should still work with the push button. Okay, it's throwing all the way. Now let's try issuing a command. So I'm going to enter a value of 200 in my switch and hit thrown and it's throwing. Hit C for closed and it's closing. So that's all that's required. It's very easy to set this up and change the address to whatever address you want it to be. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the uh, Cobalt digital switch machine. I find these to be something that uh, has considerable potential for use here on the Piedmont Southern. Uh, on the next town that I build, that'll be Ty River, uh, I'm going to be using these digital Cobalt switch machines to control all of the turnouts there. So we'll see how that goes as we uh, build out the town of Ty River. I hope you have a great uh, week and we'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.